Where do you settle geopolitical battles? One can think of many places, maybe a diplomatic summit or a high-stakes phone call or sometimes an actual battlefield. But what about a courthouse? That's what South Africa is doing. They have filed a lawsuit against Israel. Let's answer some quick questions first. Where has this case been filed? At the ICJ, the International Court of Justice. It's like the United Nations Court. What does the lawsuit say? That Israel is committing genocide against Palestinians. That is the case. Is there a law about that? Yes, there is. The 1948 Genocide Convention. Any act that tries to destroy a religious or racial group is genocide. But has Israel signed this convention? Again, yes, it has. And when does the case begin? The first hearing is this month, on January 11th and 12th. And finally, the most important question. Will it force Israel to end the war? I guess you know the answer already. It will not. Only 50% of the ICJ rulings result in compliance. In high-stakes cases, it's much lower. Like the Russia-Ukraine war, the ICJ asked Russia to stop the attacks on Ukraine. Moscow hasn't. In 2018, it asked the US to lift some sanctions on Iran. Again, Washington did not. So do not expect a ruling to change anything. Having said that, Israel did drop a surprise. Usually, they ignore such lawsuits. They don't even bother turning up to fight them. But this time, Israel is game. The State of Israel will appear before the International Court of Justice at The Hague to dispel South Africa's absurd blood libel. We have no doubt that after the Jewish state brings to justice the perpetrators of the bloodiest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust, history will judge South Africa for abetting the modern heirs of the Nazis. So Israel will fight it. But frankly, it's a risky decision. If you boycott the case and lose, no one cares. But if you fight and lose, people will care. It could leave Israel red-faced. Most of the Muslim nations have supported this lawsuit, but the U.S. says it is without merit. We, we can expect a provisional ruling in a matter of weeks or months, but a final verdict could take years. That's the legal side of it. Now let's look at the politics. Why did South Africa, of all countries, file this case? Why not a West Asian country, or a Muslim country, or an Arab country? South Africa is none of these. So why sue Israel? There are three major reasons. One is common history. South Africa suffered under colonialism. Later on, black South Africans were treated as second-class citizens, that too in their own land. Does it sound familiar? To most Palestinians, it does. They say Israel has been doing the same to them. This shared history led to warm relations with South Africa. Anti-apartheid activists were, cl were close to Palestinian leaders. These two, especially. Nelson Mandela and Yasser Arafat. They met multiple times. They also shared a similar vision. Listen to what Mandela said back in, the back in 1990. We identify with the PLO because just like ourselves, they are fighting for the right of self-determination. And the sentiment is mutual. If you go to Ramallah in the West Bank, you will find Mandela Square. At the center is a statue of Nelson Mandela. The same ideology still rules both sides. Mandela's party is in power in South Africa. Arafat's PLO still controls the West Bank, hence the warmth. That's reason number one. Reason number two why South Africa decided to do this is a shared suspicion of the West. South Africa's apartheid regime was backed by the US and the UK, if not directly, then tacitly. They kept vetoing UN sanctions on South Africa. Again, does it sound familiar? It should, because the West is now doing the same with Israel. Many South Africans see Israel as a Western construct, a Western puppet in West Asia. So they sympathize with Palestine. And finally, reason number three why South Africa filed this case against Israel, pure politics. There are some 22 Arab countries in the world, including a couple in Northern Africa. But Israel is just one country. If you want loans or investments, Arab countries are a better bet. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that principles are not involved here. I'm saying it's not just about principles. Because the same South Africa has also ignored international courts. Like in 2015, when Sudanese dictator Omar al-Bashir visited the country, Bashir had an international criminal court warrant. 
but South Africa did not arrest him. Same in 2023. South Africa hosted the BRICS summit. President Putin of Russia was supposed to come. He too had an ICC warrant. But South Africa said, not a problem. As it turned out, Putin did not come. But you get the idea. Chances are this lawsuit will be the same. A lot of headlines, a lot of embarrassing moments perhaps. But in the end, no change on the ground.